Just before I left for Munich to visit a high-end Munich 2018 show, Rune Labs updated Rune to version 1.5. It appears to be a significant update, on some points even groundbreaking. The Rune community is extremely active and apparently the Rune Labs guys watch it carefully. At the community the number of feature requests is enormous and I really wonder how the triage works at Rune. Fact is that the improvements in Rune version 1.5 are partly things that should have been done earlier and the other things that would have been nice if they were implemented earlier. Updating to version 1.5 is, as always, a piece of cake. Rune will report an update to you and ask you if it is convenient to update directly or later. When you allow it to update, it will update all devices that need updating and that are switched on with the exception of tablets and smartphones that have an update po policy of their own. Rune now knows what albums are MQA encoded, also on Tidal, and shows it on the album screen by an MQA logo in the lower right corner of each album art. This is where other formats like CD24192 or DSD64 were already indicated. Another improvement I like very much is the other version functions that now is situated next to the credits link. It only changes the lower part of the screen, now giving you a better overview. It also directly shows the versions of the album title offers. To the right, two icons show whether the album is in your collection and available from Tidal. Apparently people find it difficult to set up the preferences for their audio devices, so Rune has started a program to build a library that will offer the optimal settings for your audio device or devices. Already nearly 100 audio brands have partnered up. Rune Labs claims to have already hundreds of Rune tested DACs, streamers, integrated amplifiers and network speakers indexed. And as far as non-Rune enabled equipment is concerned, already Squeezebox, Sonos and Airplay were supported and now also every Lin network music player from back in the day until current models received an update that enables playing from Rune with the Lin DS set as the clockmaster. It is not based upon UPnP, but it's no rat either. As a result, you can use Lin equipment multi-room, but not synchronized to gear of other manufacturers. The same goes for the other solutions room built drive popular non-room ready gear like Sonos, Squeezebox and Airplay. It was already announced, although no specifics were given. Rune would support MQA. Now, there is a lot of confusion on this subject, so let me try to clarify. Any streamer or other hardware or software player that is able to send MQA files unaltered to a DA converter can be used with an MQA enabled DA converter that will decode and render it. The decoding unpacks the first unfold and thus results in an audio file of maximum 96 kHz. The second step is called the rendering and here the second unfold and the DA converter specific time smearing correction takes place during the digital to analog conversion. For more info see my videos MQA part 2 How does MQA work and where to get MQA files and how to play them. As usual you find the links in the comments in the top left corner of this screen and at the end of this video when you watch in the browser. Initially the first MQA enabled DA converters always did both the decoding and the rendering, but since the decoding does take some more processing power, it can be done by a separate processor. That can be housed in your computer, smartphone or, as for instance in the Blue Sound streamers, by the generic processor, while the rendering is done by the DA converter. The first DA converters to only render came from AudioQuest, the Dragonfly series. The first software to support this came from Tidal while 
or Nirvana followed suit. By the way, the MQA signal after decoding is called core and contains all the direct music related information. Depending on the sampling rate of the original master, it can contain signals at 44.1, 48, 88.2 or 96 kHz sampling. It can be sent directly to any DA converter, but when sent to an MQA enabled DA converter and the sampling rate of the master was even higher, that sampling rate will be used for the DA conversion. If the software player is legit, it will recognize it as an MQA source and signal accordingly. The Rune version 1.5 can do the decoding for you, so if you have a non-MQA DA converter, you can at least enjoy the higher sampling rate. If you have an MQA decoding and rendering DA converter, you can either have Rune or the DA converter do the decoding. Now, why would you do that? Well, it's audio, so it might sound better letting the more powerful processor in the Rune server do the work. But there is another interesting reason. Rune is the first player software I know of that can take the core signal process it and send it to a rendering DA converter to have it rendered as an MQA signal for the M MQA ID remains intact. This means that you can have it level all music to the same loudness, apply the equalizer or even have room correction done using the convolution filter function. You do need another program to measure and produce the convolution filter set, but these are freely available on the web. For now I have used the parametric equalizer to use a very sharp notch filter here called bandstop filter. They are set at the room mode frequencies of my room which gives an interesting result. I never liked equalizing and room correction for I always heard the digital processing causing losses in the mid range, especially on voices and the piano right hand. Although this is slightly premature and needs more investigation, I must say that the first impression was quite positive and I will certainly dive into this in a later video. Although Rune Labs released a bug fix within a week, my Rune 1.5 worked already flawless. At the Munich High End Show 2018 I still came across people that considered the 425 euros for a lifetime subscription too much money. One of them told me he bought a stabilizing platform for his CD player for about the same money that made his CD player sound even more perfect. I asked him if he had compared the sound difference between the software and his streamer to that streamed from Rune. He hadn't. I surely love Rune for the uniquely fast and intuitive user interface, the metadata, but also for the sound quality. The Rune RAD protocol to a network audio interface, streamer or network DAC is so perfectly keeping out all kinds of trouble that it gives the lowest loss when playing music from a computer or server. I still must come across an accessory that costs the same and offers the same sound improvement in my setup one. I know you already know I'm a big Rune fan, though I'm not blind for other systems. I have reviewed the Blue Sound and the NAD products and the SOTM and Sonora networked audio interfaces, just to name a few. I did the Cocktail Audio X35 and N15D recently and the X45 is on order, like the Lumin D2, the Project Streambox S2 and others. So if you're interested in even more of these, subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon or PayPal. Any financial support is much appreciated. The links are in the comments. Help me to help even more people enjoy music at the home by telling your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>